Hello everyone, this is Anson from AnsonAlex.com and in this video we're going to look at how we can address battery life issues in iOS 10. There may be some internal aspects to iOS 10 that are causing these issues and to fix that we'll just have to wait for the developers to release an update. But there are a number of things that we can actively do to try and improve our phone's battery life. So let's go ahead and take a look. The first thing that we want to look at is we want to go into the battery area within our settings. So we're going to tap on settings here on our iPhone and then you'll notice that in the second section here here we have a battery section. So let's tap on that and what we're going to see in this section is we're going to see which apps are taking up the most battery. So if you're seeing an app in this list on your phone that you never use, you definitely you should probably just delete that app. If it's an app that you do use but you don't know why it's being used so much, make sure that you're closing that app when you're done using it. You notice that on my phone Spotify is taking up the most battery. That makes sense. It's playing music so it's going to be using my speakers. It's going to, to use a lot more battery. It might also be using Bluetooth. Certain apps that can also cause a big problem with this are GPS apps. If you're using Waze or Maps or Google Maps, make sure that when you're done using that app, when you've got to your location, that you close it out because if that app is just running in your pocket uh, and you don't know about it, that's really going to drain your battery because it's using your GPS. Notice you can look for the last 24 hours and you can look for the last five days. So that's how you can see which apps are taking up the most battery on your phone. But there's a lot of other things at play here. So let's start talking about some other things. First of all, make sure that you have all of your apps updated and your iOS updated because there might be a problem with one of your apps and if the developers have fixed that problem in an update you want to have that installed on your phone so make sure you're doing that a couple other things let's scroll up on the from the bottom of our phone real quick to bring up our control center there are a few things in here we want to take a look at first of all Bluetooth is a big battery drainer and so is Wi-Fi so when you're not using Bluetooth or Wi-Fi it's a good idea to turn those off so we could disable you know Bluetooth for instance right now and then if we weren't using Wi-Fi, we could disable that as well. Also make sure that you're adjusting your brightness accordingly. Uh, if your brightness is always pumped all the way up, that's going to take a lot of battery. That is, aside from GPS, that's one of the things that takes the most battery on your phone is your brightness. So definitely make sure that you're bringing this slider down just to the level where you're comfortable seeing. Obviously that slider should adjust when it gets darker. It should Your phone should not be as bright. And when it's really bright when you're in the sun, your phone might be pumped all the way up. But you want to make sure that you're keeping an eye on that brightness slider. You also want to make sure that you have AirDrop turned off. You'll notice we have AirDrop over here to the right in our control center. and if we're not actively using AirDrop to send and receive files, we want to turn that off so that it doesn't search for a connection. That will also use quite a bit of battery. So I'm going to slide out of the control center now. We're going to take a look at a few other settings in our phone. So I'm going to go back from this battery section and I'm going to go into the general section. So that's up here towards the top. You'll notice here we are now in general. And there's a few things that I want to take a look at in here. The first one is in accessibility. So we're going to go into accessibility. And then you'll notice that there's this feature called reduce motion. Now I have always had this feature turned on, which means I have reduced motion on my phone. That uh, changes kind of the way that you transition to like say your home screen. You'll notice right now if I go home, see how it kind of parallaxed out. If I turn on reduce motion, it'll just close. So you can see the different effect there. And that does save battery. Now the problem is with iOS 10, you can send iMessages with the backgrounds with like the confetti and the fireworks. And if reduce motion is turned on, you can't see those effects in iMessage. So if you are done playing around with the new effects in iMessage and you want to save some battery life, go ahead and turn reduce motion on. So that's the one feature I wanted to show you here in accessibility. But let's go back out to the general area and I want to now tap on background app refresh. So this is a list of apps on our phone and the ones that have the switch to the right of them turned green are allowed to refresh when we're not actively using them. Now some of those can be important such as your GPS, maybe your mail app so you get new emails even though you're not in the mail app. But other ones are not like for instance any games uh, you can turn that off. A, a lot of these apps, any apps that aren't going to remind you about something or aren't going to receive emails, that type of thing, or, or a GPS signal, you can turn background app refresh off. And if you go through this list and you turn a lot of them off, uh, you will definitely notice some battery improvement on your phone. You can even turn it off. And then if you realize, oh, you know what, I do need background app refresh on for this app, you can go back in and you can turn that back on again. So uh, go through that list and turn off all of the apps for background app refresh that don't need to be turned on. So now I'm going to go back to the main settings screen and I want to talk a little bit about location services. So what we're going to do is we're going to tap on privacy from this screen and then we're going to tap on location services. So 
In Location Services, we have a list of apps that are allowed to use our location, our GPS, which takes a lot of battery. So in this list, you really just want apps uh, that you know need to know your location, such as your GPS app. Uh, so you can see, if I scroll down, go down a little bit further here, we've got the Maps app. So that is set to be on while using the app, which is great. So that means when we're not using it, it shouldn't be using our GPS. Uh, so like, you know, Lyft or Uber, you're going to need your location for those apps. Uh, but Instagram, if you're not posting your location, you don't need to have location services turned on for that app. So go ahead and go through this list as well, just like background app refresh and turn all of these apps to never if they don't need to know your location. That's going to save you a lot of battery as well. There's also another area here in location services that I'd like to show you. And this is not new to iOS 10, but it's definitely something that a lot of people don't know about. And that's the system services section down here at the bottom of location services. And if we tap to go into system services, we'll see all of these services on our iPhone that use our GPS. So some of these we need on and some we don't. So obviously you want find my iPhone on. Cell network search, you don't have to have that on, but that will help you improve your reception in some areas. You obviously you might want your emergency turned on. Uh, Location-based alerts, that would be if you use like reminders and you need to be reminded at a certain location, so you can leave that one on. But location-based Apple ads, location-based suggestions, motion calibration and distance, time zone settings, you can turn a lot of these off. Now time zone, if you're traveling a lot in different time zones, you might want that on as well. Uh, but then you can also turn off frequent locations down at the bottom. Uh, your iPhone doesn't need to know where you frequent. Uh, so that might be for like a future app or something might use that setting. But for now, you can pretty much turn that off. And then down here under product improvement, you can turn all of these off. It's nice to, to send some statistics to Apple once in a while to help them improve their products. But if we're going to do that at the expense of our battery, then I'm going to, I'm going to turn that off. So all of these three diagnostics and usage popular near me, routing and traffic, you can turn all three of those off. So those won't be using your GPS and you'll save a little bit of battery. We're, gonna, we're going to go back here. So now I want to talk about one setting that commonly causes a fast draining battery on an iPhone or iPad. And what that is, is your screen auto lock setting. So from the settings here on my iPhone, I'm going to tap and go into the display and brightness section. And in this section, you'll notice that there's an area called auto lock. And right now on my phone, that's set to five minutes. I could set it to never, or I could also set it as low as 30 seconds. If it is set to never on your phone, change it. Change it to five minutes because if it's set to never, there are definitely times when you forget to manually press the lock button. You're on your phone and you make a phone call, you put your phone in your pocket and your screen is on the entire time it's in your pocket. That's going to drain your battery really, really fast. So, you know, maximum you want this set to is five minutes. The only time I set this to never is honestly when I'm doing video tutorials like this because I might be up here talking maybe too much and my screen shuts off. But in my day-to-day -day usage, I would have this set, I usually would probably have this set to about two minutes, but I'm going to keep it five minutes for now so it doesn't turn off during this video. So let's go back now. I want to talk about a couple things within mail on your iPhone that could cause you to drain battery faster. So we're going to go a little bit down this list and I'm going to go to the mail section. Now within the mail section, we're going to tap on accounts up here at the top. And then notice that at the bottom of this window, we have a section that says fetch new data. So we'll, let's tap on fetch new data. This is the section of our email that basically determines how often our mail services are contacting a mail server to check for mail. So you'll notice that I have all of my email accounts set to fetch down here, which means that my email account is actively going to access another server and request any new emails to be sent to my phone. But down at the bottom here, we can specify how often we want our phone to fetch for new email. So if you have your settings set to 15 minutes, every 15 minutes, that means every 15 minutes, your phone is using Wi-Fi, it's sending a message, it's receiving messages, and it's going to use up a lot more battery. So you might want to change this to every 30 minutes or hourly. Now I set mine to manually because with these email accounts, I don't always need to see the exact second I get an email in. But it is important to be aware that if you do change this, if you change this to manually, you may have, depending on the rest of the settings in that email account, you may have to manually go in and refresh your email list to see new email. So I do want to mention that so that if you are use, you have a really important business email address and you need to know exactly when emails come in for that, that you don't change this setting. You would want this um, to be set to every 15 minutes or, or just kind of leave it as is. But if you want to save some battery, you can change this to fetch manually.
So these are most of the settings that will affect uh, the battery on your iPhone. Now you definitely want to make sure that if you've been experiencing problems and you haven't restarted your phone in a while, to go ahead and restart it. And if you've adjusted a lot of settings uh, during this video tutorial, then you definitely want to restart your phone as well. And always be aware that you can use low power mode. If we go back to our main settings screen here, you'll notice that uh, in the battery section, we have this option to turn on low power mode which basically reduces uh, certain applications on your phone from using as much battery. So if you are down to 20% battery or 10% battery, you can flip on low power mode. You'll still be able to make and receive phone calls, text messages, that sort of thing to save a little bit of battery. And if you're in an area where you're not going to be using uh, your cellular service for a while or, or Wi-Fi, you can turn on airplane mode by going into your control center and then tapping on the airplane. You won't be able to send, receive phone calls, but it's going to save you a lot of battery power. So I hope you found this video helpful. Again, there might be certain things with the new update that we can't control that will have to be released by developers with a hot fix, but I've gone through pretty much every aspect to uh, using your iPhone that may be causing it to drain battery. So if you're still having issues after adjusting all of these settings, you may want to contact Apple or submit a support ticket. Uh, but I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, I would appreciate a thumbs up here on YouTube. And if you want to see more technology tips and tutorials, don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's all I have for you for now. This is Anson from AnsonAlex.com.